Yogi Clan, what is up, y'all? Welcome back to Yogi Cycle Service. We are in the shop today with Bertha, my bagger. And we are about to do a project that is long overdue. So it is February of 2023, and I discovered this problem in March of 2022. Ashamed to say it, but we've neglected this for 11 months since I discovered it. And what is it, you may ask? Uh, long story short, my when I squeeze the front brake, my light doesn't light up on the tail light. Now, when I, I push down on the brake pedal, the lights come on. Let me show you what the problem is, okay? Hang tight for a second. All right, you got a view of the back of the bike. Let's turn it on. The foot switch for the brakes. You can see my lights come on. When I squeeze the front handlebar, I ain't got nothing. Rear, front. So obviously you can tell that the tail light is working. The brake light lights up as it should. So the way I figured out that I have a problem or had a problem was when we were heading down to Daytona, I was rolling down the highway in cruise. Now when I'm in cruise and I wanna disengage the cruise, you have three different ways to do that. You can turn off the switch of the cruise control switch itself, that will turn off cruise. You can tap the rear brake, just like you can in a car that will disengage cruise, or you can tap the front brake that will disengage cruise. And the last time I mentioned this, somebody said, I can't believe you'd be going down the highway and hitting your front brake to turn off the cruise. Come on, y'all, really? When you, when you tap your brake on your car, does your car suddenly stop like that? No, it doesn't. Neither does that happen when you tap the front brake. I'm not talking about grabbing a fistful of brake. I'm talking about just going boop. So I'm heading down the highway, coming up on some traffic. I wanna to start to slow down. I tap the front brake. And it had a little bit of braking power, but nothing to speak of. When I let go of the brake, all of a sudden the bike is picking up speed again to get back up to where the, the cruise control was set. And I'm like, well, that's odd. It didn't disengage. So I tapped it again didn't disengage. So then I tapped the brake, the rear brake with my foot and it disengaged. I was like, why is this front lever not disengaging this anymore? And I had just done a T-clock inspection literally the week before we went to Daytona and it was working then. Matter of fact, I think I even recorded it and you can see in that video, it was working. So why are we not working now? Well, I had the rear brake light switch go out on this biggie not too long ago. Same type of scenario, same situation. You tap the rear brake, it lights up, it's just fine. You pull the front brake lever, nothing. So that's a really easy fix because the switch is, you just pull the switch out, you cut it off, you solder a new one on, you put it back together, boom, done. So I'm thinking, okay, 20 bucks. I can have a new brake switch for the bagger. We'll fix this and be on our way, not a problem. Au contraire, from 2014 and up, and I'm not sure about 13, but I know for a fact, 2014 and up, the brake light switch is integrated in the whole switch assembly. It is not independent like what I found on my 2003 Fat Boy. So if you wanna replace that brake switch on your 2014 newer touring bike, you have to buy the whole switch, the whole darn thing. Now you can find them used on eBay for $100, $150, but I really don't want to buy a used set of switches because, heck, I might be doing this six months from now again because that switch went out too. So I thought, well, the only real way to fix this, I don't remember how much this cost, but it was somewhere between $200 and $250. And unfortunately, you know, for the Fat Boy, when I had to replace that, I could get it through Drag Specialties. So instead of paying $40 to Harley, I paid like $20 to Drag Specialties. Well, Drag Specialties doesn't make the switches that I'm aware of for a 2014 Ultra Limited. Now, the difference with the Limited is it's got the CB, it's got your radio switches over here, the cruise control switch over here, the it's got all the switches. So you have to buy the whole darn thing. So we bought the whole darn thing. These came from Harley Davidson. I think they came from the Harley Davidson out of uh, Rock Hill. South Carolina, I believe it was 200 bucks. I don't remember, maybe there's a packaging. Oh yeah, there's a receipt here. And these are backlit. The stock Harley switches are not backlit. It just has what the emblems are painted on there. These apparently are backlit. Kind of cool, but 
whatever. These cost, oh, I was wrong, $285.64. I bought these, yeah, in November. We have not switched these out yet, but we're gonna do that today because riding season is coming and we just as a club did all of our T-clock inspections to make sure post winter season that our bikes are up to speed and ready to go. So in doing the T-clock, everything is good with, with Bertha here, with the exception of the switches. So I figured, well, it's probably time I put these on the bike. Not really a hard task. You do need to take your controls completely apart. The thing that you need to be uber cautious about, and when I say uber cautious, I mean like uber cautious, there is a ribbon right there. See that ribbon? Don't screw that up. Don't mess that up, because I've seen people pull these out by accident and you're, you're pretty much screwed from that point. So when you separate these and open this up so it goes around your bar, you need to be, and open that up like that, you need to be uber careful of that ribbon right there. But these pretty much, there are two plugs. You can see right there, there's one plug here and one plug here. You pretty much just open it up, unplug one and plug it in and plug the other in. I sent with this package two other little buttons. I wonder if this is missing. Oh, a third one. Found the third one. Uh, run and horn. They give you different d buttons depending upon what your current switches are. So horn, and I have nothing on the top. And there's the horn with the nothing on the top. So on your left hand switch, they leave a blank spot right there. And you pick which one of these caps. So they give you extra switches for different models with different features. Snap that one on and there we go. Now the switches are exactly a stock. So let's go ahead and get these old ones off and put these on and see if that fixes our problem for $287. Lord, please fix the problem. We'll start with this side first, which would be your right hand side. So we'll put you on left hand side of the bike so you can see what we're working on right here. Really simple. This is all done with Torx bits. First one is going to be a T27. We're going to take rear brake and clamp and controls off first. Go ahead and make sure you support it from underneath. Okay, clamp is off. We can take that off. I just want to set it to where it's not going to fall. And there should be two bolts, one back here up high and one back down at the bottom. So up top here and down at the bottom, pull those two bolts and that should free up the clamp. I'm gonna notice that this clamp line is pretty much on the top of here vertical. So when we put it back, you wanna make sure you, don't, you have it set to where the switches are right. And I'm just gonna do this vertical line as this clamp follows through on the top, just so I can remember my housing and where it's located. The back comes off and then from here, there's a little tab you can pull out on to release this mechanism and then you can remove the switch. Pull this wire out of the housing. See, two little plugs you can pull off. Just go ahead and take this front cover off also. There's a little push tab right here that you can push down on and that plug will come out. One is out, there we go. Second one is out, switch is off. This one in, here and both snap, and you can see here's where you uh, pull and get this out. Wrap it back, oh, I wanna tuck this wire into the side here and protect it. Wrap this wire around your bar. That's the biggest thing is making sure your wires do not get pitched. Front cover can go on, make sure everything is seated. Back cover can go on. Tighten up your two screws. Before you seat them down, I'm gonna make sure my line is where it's supposed to be. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten both of these down. And we're gonna just do a quick test run. I'm gonna hold it down and pretend like it's depressed. Let go. And oh, look at that, the switch works. Let's get this put back together and I'll show you quick. So I'm gonna wanna push this brake lever in. There's a little tab that sticks out in the brake lever. Let me show you. A little tab right here. Sticks out in the brake lever right there. You wanna make sure that this brake lever is in like this. That way it doesn't catch the rubber boot of the switch. Cause if, you, if, you, if it does and you just jam it in there, 
you potentially are gonna break that rubber boot off, which is gonna break the switch. You don't want that to happen. Okay, clamp is started. Here we go, we're tight. All right, let's make sure everything works. Start, stop, that works. Turn signal, that works. Information button, that works. CB, that works. Menu buttons, those work. Start, stop. That works. So all the switches we know are working, so we know our plugs are in right. Let's go check out the brake light, see what it does. Push on the foot pedal, it works. Pull on the handbrake, it now works. All right, so with the brake side done, let's do the clutch side. It's gonna be the exact same process. Pull the clamp off. All right, we're gonna wanna slide this cap off. A little groove, it just slides off that way. Go ahead, get our T25 back out. Pull the back of the clamp off. Pull the front of the housing off. This one's a little finicky because it's been in here for 90,000 miles. So I'm gonna push on it, see if I can wiggle it, press it down, pull it out. Nope. This plug's being a little finicky, don't necessarily advise this all the time, but we're gonna do it on this time. Got a little jeweler's screwdriver so I can get up under there to lift the tab up so it comes out. Cause you wanna push this down, but I mean, this bike has 100,000 miles, so it, it's kind of fused together. So we gave it a little love, a little assistance with a little jeweler's screwdriver. And we get the new switch assembly. We're going to go ahead, plug it in. We're gonna route this wire over the top in the little groove. Pay attention to the groove where the wire sits. Wrap this one around. Push on that to snap it in place. You wanna be really gentle with all this. You don't really wanna force, force it on there. Because if it is, that means you're probably gonna be pinching wires. Before we put the clutch on, let's just verify all the switches again. Hit the horn. High beam, low beam, intercom to passenger. Uh, do not have voice recognition, so, but it did signal it. Uh, select to the menus, volume, and cruise control. And that works. So there you go, Yogi Clan. Bertha is fixed. Really not a hard job at all. Thankfully now, as you can see in the back door, look at that. Brake lights are working again. Heck yeah! Now I need to see if running in cruise control if it shuts off. I'll follow up next time I do a vlog on the bike with the GoPros. We'll, we'll test that theory and see if it works. But now my brake light switch is working. So what made me think it was a switch? Well, uh, the rear brake, when I press on it, worked just fine. The front brake, I wound up taking this off and putting my finger on the switch and doing this. And I had nothing. So I knew it was either a wiring issue or a switch issue. I haven't touched these handlebars and the wiring on it in probably 70,000 miles. So I figured it, it probably was not the wiring. It could have been, it could have been. But since I solder everything together and put heat shrink tape on it, I doubted that was the issue. So I went for the switches first, but I would hate for you to spend 300 bucks and it not be the switches. So do what you can to try to figure out what the issue is first before you go spend the 300 bucks. But I'm happy I did. It fixed my problem. I figured that was probably the problem with the bike having 90,000 miles on it. I figured if anything's gonna go out, it's probably not gonna be my solder. It's probably gonna be the switch. And that's indeed what it was. And as you see, it was an easy fix, an easy repair, literally 10 minutes on each side. We'll see what it looks like with the switches being backlit at night. I'm sure we'll be able to get some video footage of that soon. But thank you for joining me today. I hope this video helps you. If you have issues with your switches going on, it really kind of stinks that they integrated it all into one. I really don't like that, but hey, whatever. So thank you for joining me, Yogi Clan. I hope this video finds you well and blessed, and I will catch you on the next one. All right, y'all. Love you guys. Peace.